Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Wherever you are listening to this message, we want to trust that God would speak to your heart. Over the last few weeks, we've been answering this question, what motivates your move? And we looked at the motivational gifts, the way that God put you together. And I trust that over the season, you learned something about yourself, but that you also learned how God wants to use you and how your gifting is necessary and is needed. If you missed any of those sessions, I want to encourage you to go back uh, on all the different channels and to go look at that and to better understand what motivates your move. So over this season, a scripture that I looked at a couple of times is 1 Corinthians 13. We know it so well. It says, if we speak in tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, then I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I am gain nothing. And as I look at this, it's very clear that we can have certain actions, we can do certain things, but if we do not do them in love, then that is not pleasing to God. It's not the God way of doing things. So doing certain things, but not doing them in love is a problem. But the flip side of that is we can say that we love, but then do nothing. And just as Doing without love is a problem. Equally, loving or saying that we love without doing is a problem. And for the next few weeks, we want to focus on this thought, saying that love is something that we need to put into action or love in action. And I want to read you the scripture that we want to focus on this morning, Romans 12, 9 to 10. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. So I want to start by asking this question, if we are instructed to, to have a love that is sincere, then the question is, what does it mean to be sincere? And the definition from the dictionary is that sincere means that there is no hypocrisy, there is no deceit, that it is open and it is genuine. It is without deceit, without pretense, without hypocrisy. It is truthful. It is straightforward. It is honest. And then I love this third point. Being the same in actual character as in outward appearance. In other words, that what we say is what we are. That what we say is what we do. And if we then love, then sincerity means that it should not only be a a word or a pretense, but it must be something that we actually live from the inside outwards. It should be genuine and it should be real. I want to add this thought. It should have no hidden agenda. It is so often people can love what they think is love, but they only do it to gain something. They only do it for their own benefit. And read that verse in the New Living Translation, it says, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Don't pretend, but be sincere, really love them. So to try and explain this to you, I want to take a a verse that we all know so well, John chapter 3, verse 16, which shows us the love of God and the extent of that love. It says, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So, point number one. Love needs to have an action. If, If God only loved us, but he did not give his son, then that love was not a love that was a love in action. And it was not a sincere love. But because God's love is sincere, he gave something. And what he gave cost him something. He gave his only son. Think about this for a moment. What could God have given? He could have given all the gold in the world. 
He could have given a, a whole planet, a solar system, a galaxy. But even that didn't carry the value that he attached to his love. He gave his only son. And when God gave, he gave with a purpose. There was a reason for his giving, a reason in his giving. It says that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And we begin to see a pattern develop that we can apply to our own lives. That real love must have an action. That action will cost you something. And the reason why we give that, why we allow that cost is for a purpose. And in this case, it's interesting that there is two things that happens with that purpose. Firstly, it is to remove something or to keep something away from us or to protect us from something. And secondly, it is to add something. And we can also see in this that real love identifies the need. It identifies the problem. It sees the problem. It's willing to take action to pay the price, to prevent the consequence of what is currently happening, and to step into a place where a blessing is delivered and given to someone. I want to ask you to, to measure your love. If you think of the fact that you love this person or you love the Lord, is there, is there something of an action involved in that, or is it just words? Is your love sincere? When we look of the fact that God has called us to love people, is there an action? Is there a cost to that action? And the third thing that we need to measure is, is there a purpose? Is there, is there something that you are trying to prevent? Are you trying to keep someone from something and give him something else? So a good example, practical example, is if I see someone who is hungry, I identify the hunger. And if I say that I love that person, that means that there needs to be an action. That action will cost me something. I will need to go and buy that person food and give that food to him. It will cost me something. But I want to remove the hunger. I want to prevent the hunger. Instead, I want to provide him with energy and strength and the ability to continue to live. You see, love shows my actions. If I say I love, but there is nothing that I do, then there's a problem with my love. And my love is not sincere. My love is not genuine. My love is not real. In 1 Corinthians 8, Paul is uh, addressing the church and he's talking about an, an offering, a gift that needs to be taken up and, and needs to be given and taken to a church in need. And listen to what he says in verse 8. He says, I'm not commanding you. I'm not commanding you to give money to this church that is in need. But I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others. Paul says, here's an opportunity to see what is in your heart. You say that you love that church in need. Now's the opportunity to, to show that. Not just with your words, but rather with your actions. The sincerity of your love. And see, God calls us to love others. And I want to read you a couple of verses, and I want to encourage you and stir you to, to reflect on this and to, to let it sink into your heart and hold it up as a mirror to see if, if this is what is happening in your life. Does this, these verses that I'm going to read, does this show the sincerity of your love? Does it show the action of your love? In Deuteronomy 15, verse 11, God says, There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. I think when I, when I read this verse, uh, I almost get the sense that God wants to say, say but we're going to give, but we might need to give again tomorrow. And we might need to give again in the next week or in the next month. And maybe 
in this difficult season that we find ourselves, maybe you've gotten to the point where you say, but, but I've loved, but, but I've reached the end of my love. I don't have any more to, to give. God's encouragement is that we should continue to live with an open hand because there will always be need. There will always be someone who draws on our love and, and the requires of our love to become an action that will cost us something. But that is for a purpose. In Proverbs 3, 27, it says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, Come back tomorrow. I will give it to you then when you already have it with you. Sometimes we, we feel like this. I, I, I know I should give my love. I know my love needs to flow over into an action. I need to go and help that person or encourage that person or teach that person again. All those motivational gifts that we look at, looked at. I need to go and do that again. Sometimes we, we feel like, I'll do it tomorrow. I don't have the capacity to, to do it right now. And I want to trust that as we, we look at these verses, we will hear God's voice and God's call, stirring us again and calling us again to stand up and to again go and allow love to be in action. In Isaiah 1 verse 17, it says, Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. There are so many causes. There are so many things that if we look through the eyes of love, we will see a problem. We will identify a problem. God looked at us. John 3.16. He, from His perspective of love, He saw that we were perishing. We were going to eternal death. Jesus came that we might have life. Jesus knew that in order to get us away from that place of perishing and get us to the place of eternal life, the purpose of His giving, that there had to be an action. He had to give up heaven. He had to come to earth. And He had to pay a price. He had to suffer on the cross. When you look at the different causes around you, the oppressed, the fatherless, the widows, all the different causes, if you look through the eyes of God, through the eyes of love, you will see these areas where your action of love is required. In Luke 6, 35, verse 35 to 36, Jesus Himself says, Love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as our Father is merciful. Love in action. I spoke earlier about the fact that as soon as we take that action, it will cost us something. Maybe one of the biggest costs is not what it costs my pocket or my time or my energy, but the emotional cost that it bears. The emotional cost of loving someone again. The emotional cost of loving someone that you might begin to think, but they they don't deserve my love. They don't deserve my love in action. They don't deserve that I stand up again and again give time, energy, money, love to them. And I want to trust that as we journey through this short series, God would stir our hearts. And we will realize that it is not only when we do without love but it's also when we love without doing that we are actually missing the mark. And I want to trust that as we pray together in a moment that God would again fill you with His love. And as you reflect on Jesus and His sacrificial death and His laying down of his, Himself, 
that God Himself would refresh you and restore you and fill you again with His love so that you will be able to step out and love again. Let's pray together. Lord, You promise in Romans 5 that the Holy Spirit Himself is the one who pours out the love of God in our hearts. So Holy Spirit, we, we ask, we open ourselves up to You would you again pour out the love of the Father in our hearts? Would you come and bring healing to our hearts in the areas where we have, we've been hurt when we loved? Father, bring healing to that. Allow your love to cover that. And Father, give us the capacity again to look through the eyes of love and to see the need around us, to see the oppression, to see the wickedness to see the deception, to see the brokenness in the hearts of people, to see those who are living without Jesus and, and whose lives will literally be lost, not just the physical life, but also their eternal life. Father, again, fill us with love to step out and to do something. I pray for each one listening to this message that, Father, as we, as we open our eyes from this prayer, we would look at the world differently and again see through your eyes. And I pray that you give us the strength to stand up and to go and do something, to go and do something practically that will cost us something but will have a purpose, and that is to transform the lives of the people around us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that God would show you that He would give you the strength and that you would go out and love just as Jesus loved us.